Mexico. Everyone has an idea about it, but how many of us actually know it? Its northern borders have plastered it with images of fear, so much as to even build a steel wall. However justified, it's a mark, and one hard to ignore. Ten weeks of overcoming mental and physical obstacles. Will it reward us with a new perspective? We're here to show you what's actually behind the wall. As we guide the Chinook off the ship, our first task is to navigate through the city of Mazatlan and get onto the old Highway 40. Nestled amidst the rugged Sierra Madre Mexican terrain, the Espinazo del Diablo, the devil's backbone, weaves a tale of intrigue and trepidation. This fabled highway, notorious for its perilous twists and treacherous turns, conceals more than just supernatural lore. It has served as a conduit for illicit trade and nefarious dealings of organized crime for decades. Despite this chilling reality, it is also famed for its far-reaching beauty and wondrous spectacle. This route would show us right away that it isn't for the faint of heart. Not the road you want to get stuck behind this guy on when it's 100 degrees out. Uh, we are actually pulled over on the side of the road here because something is wrong. Something is very wrong with Mr. Sunday the Chinook. Like, definitely loud. Wow. Maybe because it's empty. Well, I feel like it's definitely Breaking down on the side of a road that's said to be the most dangerous drive in Mexico was certainly not on our planned itinerary. Staying calm and being prepared has got us back on track despite our extremely loud new fuel pump. We had no idea how long this new fuel pump was gonna last or if it even was gonna solve our problem. Knowing that the nearest mechanic was hundreds of kilometers away, the only thing we could do was drive. <laughs> like, how am I supposed to know where to go? It's impossible to know what to expect out here. You may get a semi that takes up the entire road or horses in the middle of it. But one thing's for sure, you will be in awe of the beauty. So I think judging by the light, we should start our drive early tomorrow morning so we can see this place early. Yeah, hopefully that'll make up for me spending two hours crawling around Due to the time spent showering in gasoline today, we've only completed a quarter of this mountain highway. So as the sun bows for our efforts, we pull off the highway into an inviting pine grove. We are greeted with a breathtaking view and a sight of the toll road way, way down below. We are already so happy that we chose this route. Well, apart from the fuel pump sounding absolutely <laughs> terrible. Fuel pump sounds horrible, but it seems to be working so far. And this is an epic camp. And the best part about it is that it's kind of cold. <laughs>
day two on the devil's backbone was sure to go more smoothly, right? Right? The highway cuts through steep cliffs, offering stunning panoramic views of the Sierra Madre Occidental mountain range. The road's intricate layout of hairpin bends and switchbacks tests the skills and nerves of even the most experienced drivers. Legends and tales of supernatural occurrences have been associated with this road, adding an extra layer of intrigue and fascination to its already haunting reputation. Yeah, this is El Palomino. Drives. One of the coolest drives I've ever done. Yeah. Well, I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've never been the driver. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> that's really magical. That one section was crazy, like sheer cliff and then the cliff on this side too. And plants I've never seen. That was the ice cream truck. You got a little freezer in the back. Oh, wow, that's amazing. We should have got some ice cream. Yeah. As the legend has it, when God struck the devil down from heaven, he landed here, and his backbone created this spine in the mountain. The road sits almost entirely above 2,000 meters in elevation, and eventually you'll come to this off-road park. While Stacy had to constantly remind me about vehicle preservation, it felt like a great opportunity to get her in the driver's seat and get more comfortable off-camber and on the rocks. There's some pretty wild lines that the Chinook wasn't going to be driving today.
I've had some really scary experiences in the passenger seat of this vehicle. So it was truly empowering to finally be in control. And I had a lot of fun. In Canada, you wake up with birds. Sometimes bears. In Mexico, you wake up with a new pet. With puppies. <laughs> I think we have a new dog. Oh, dear. If you've traveled at all through Mexico, you've likely had a stray dog or puppy pull at your heartstrings. It was alarming how fast we felt connected to this stray dog, but we knew we couldn't keep her. When you love it, you got to let it go. Yet again, we pulled up to a locked gate, but way over there, there's a guy waving, and I think he's saying to go back, so hopefully there's another entrance. The campsite where we're staying is known as La Joya, or La Joya, and it is a famous Mexican ranch that hosts the film set for numerous Western movies, including many famous John Wayne films. The Duke loved Durango and the canyon that this ranch is on, and he would often vacation up here during his career. The Train Robbers, Chisholm, The Mask of Zorro, and Texas Rising were all filmed here. It made me think about what it must be like when there was a man for every job and the justice system was two pistols in the streets. It seems that our first few days in Mexico have been the trials and tests that apparently we asked for. But despite that, it feels good to be here, at this camp, with each other. Goes anywhere. I'm very sick. You're very sick. Okay. 
Our campsite tonight would be La Casa del Tio, a beautiful ranch tucked away in the foothills of San Luis Potosí. If you want to support us on this crazy adventure and see some of the best that Mexico has to offer coming up, pause this video, join our fam, and smash that subscribe button. Our journey is already one of elaborate contrasts, but I would rather the full spectrum of life and emotions than one of monotony. Confident yet still apprehensive, we navigated Sunday out of camp and through more quaint and colorful Mexican villages. We eventually came across the striking remains of what we can only assume to be an abandoned resort just outside of San Rafael. These mosaic murals were unlike anything that we had ever seen, and it was hard to believe that something like this could just be left. These brief experiences feel like the gifts of overland travel. When you have a destination in mind, but the in-between is completely unknown. Another one of these gifts has to be these perfectly banked corners on these radical windy highways that I feel the late Ken Block would have thoroughly enjoyed. Something strange is that our entire time in Mexico, we have yet to see a single international vehicle or other overland traveler. And while we appreciate the authentic connection we're getting with the Mexican culture, it strikes the question, why? Are we just in an off season? Or has the fear from the media been instilled so deeply that people are missing this part of Mexico entirely. I'll leave that one to you. We're not naive to its dangers, but we're also open-minded to its opportunities and the $1 street tacos. changing. The scenery is changing. 
It's warmer here, and we can sense our destination is approaching. <laughs> We've unlocked two new achievements here in mainland Mexico. One is one dollar street tacos, two is one dollar beers, and they put ice in the bag. It's amazing. It's currently, <laughs> it's 38 degrees Celsius right now, and uh, we're noticing. It's hot. This is actually the lowest we've been. Yeah, it's probably, I don't know. In a couple weeks. 100% humidity, I don't know. It's, it's real. <laughs> the ice cube is gone. The ice cube is <laughs> this region is roughly defined as the area in which the Huastec people had influence when their civilization was at its height during the Mesoamerica period. The Huastec people inhabited this area for thousands of years before the arrival of the Spanish. Today, the region is a unique blend of ancient and modern, with vibrant cities and charming small towns coexisting along ancient ruins and traditional communities. It is also the most biodiverse region in all of Mexico, boasting over 2,000 species of plants. Spoiler alert, we've actually been chasing the waterfalls, and this area has some of the most impressive in the entire nation. It's like, I think it's 38 degrees outside. I mean, the water's probably 20 degrees, but it sure makes it feel colder. The mineral rich rock and clay in this region give it the beautiful turquoise color. Although we're not convinced an elderly man isn't sitting at the top, dropping food coloring into it. This waterfall falls 50 meters, or 164 feet, and would be the start of the Great Waterfall Tour of Mexico. Well, this is the most beautiful waterfall I've ever been to. Well, that was waterfall number one of five, I think. What, what's your yeah. rating? What do you think of that waterfall? I think it was rude of us to start with that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was insane. Oh man, it was so magical. We got there at the perfect time of day. And... I'm just so amazed that we got it to ourselves. Yeah. Like we showed up there, there were a few people, and then by the time we left, we had that entire oasis to ourselves, which is... You know, 
expect anything better than that. Yeah, it was breathtaking. But okay. do we know where we're going? No. No, we don't know where we're going. But that doesn't mean we won't figure it out. Because we have finally have phone plans. And we have joined the free world. But there's no service here. However, there's no service here. <laughs> so we will be following a blank pin on a blank map. <laughs> Uh, follow us for more tips on how to oh, how to overland. Yeah, nobody said we were experts. We're just good at having fun. We are now deep in the land of sugar canes, and these farmers are working incredibly hard to bring thousands of tons of cane to the processing plant. Waterfall tour continues, and at this point, I don't think we'll ever dry out. It's hard to believe that we still have the most epic waterfalls still to see. Fireflies had tucked us into bed the night before, and the humidity brings a world so rich and nourishing, you'll miss it when you're gone. Disguised as a restaurant, only those who stopped to look would find out what was over the edge of this cliff. Okay. Apparently there's 170 steps to get down. And the spiral is already making me dizzy. <laughs> back up this? No, there's a gondola. Escalator. I haven't done physical activity <laughs> in a very long time. <laughs> Here we go! This is really cool. I feel like it's just gonna fall off. Yeah, I turn it on first. I win this battle. Go. zero expectations for what this place even looked like, we were left speechless. While the first waterfall felt like a playground, this one feels like medicine.
definitely feels crap. Finding camp in this region has proven to be rather few and far between if you're not looking to pay. Thankfully, after an hour of meandering through only sugarcane fields, a spot on the river presented itself. This was a perfect example of not realizing how big our Chinook actually is. It took many tries, and we had to trim some branches. But we finally leveled the truck and settled in for a peaceful night next to the river with the bugs. The morning would bring more unexpected surprises. Los años? 22. Oh, see. Sí. Yeah. Wow. I think I understood about 6% of what he was saying, but I think I understood about 20% of his body language and his energy. I'm pretty sure he told us that uh, he is either owned or been working here for about 20 years and I, I think he said he lives uh, yeah, uh, over there and that we could come for drinks. Oh, here he is again. Oh, oh, muy bien. Wow, gracias amigo. Ah, si? Oh, no, that, no, that's too, too mucho. Gracias. Okay. And this, my friends, is how you learn Spanish. By drinking beers at 9 a.m. with a 78-year-old Mexican farmer. It's 9 a.m. I can't tell you how awesome this experience was. For the first hour. By the third hour, we were ready to go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> We're trying to make bread. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if we kept our starter chat alive. recommendation this would be our camp for the night which spot would you like which perfect spot would you like 
We've been wanting to make curry for months now. Well, I, I don't know if it's the humidity or I did something wrong, but it's still very sticky even after seven hours. Uh, maybe I didn't add enough flour. However, we are making little pancake things and they taste so good. So the flavor's there. It just doesn't look as nice as Instagram. <laughs> nice. Well, I figured it out. When people think of magical places, this is what they think of. This is it. This is the most magical thing I've ever seen. And I've never used the word magical this much in my life, but I can't think of a better word to describe what I'm seeing. I gotta show you before we get into our my epic tour of this place on the GoPro. I've gotta show you just what's up on top of this hill. It's, I don't know, it's staggering, it's magical. I'm running out of adjectives that perfectly suit what my eyes are seeing. Hang on a sec, I gotta cross this little river. So this is actually a paid campsite. We paid five dollars Canadian for a private lagoon. <laughs> but just on the other side of the lagoon is what I'm about to show you now. Piquito. 
Bueno, sí, muchas gracias. ¿A cuánto cuesta? Será 110. 110? Sí. ¿Cuesta? 25. 25. Okay. So, 20. 25? Yeah, sí. Uh -huh. 20. ¿Cuál es el 10? No, es el 10. No es el 10. ¿Cuál sería, amigo? El que ustedes escojan. Ah, sí. Ah, uh, ¿el que? Sí. ¿Eso? Ok. Perfecto. Y... Muy, muy bien, amigo. Gracias. Mire, servilletas. Oh. Ah, sí. Sí, sí, sí. There you go. Las que sean necesarias, ¿eh? Gracias. Ah, okay. <risa> ok. Ok. Dale. Muchas gracias. Ah, hey, su cambio, espérame. Ah, es ok. Es ok. Sí. Okay. Okay. ok. Gracias. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Is it pineapple? Mm-mm. It's like a custard. Ooh. I'm gonna try. Mmm. Oh my god, it's so good. Like a homemade donut sandwich. Mm-hmm. This is how you gain weight in Mexico. Yeah, and people just come up to your camp and feed you pastries. Hello. <laughs> when you when do you live in <laughs> Perhaps our biggest surprise of this trip so far was not realizing that it was Cinco de Mayo. What started as a private lagoon turned into a full-blown fiesta. And while we initially tried to resist it, us embracing it turned into the most wholesome and gratifying experience we could have asked for. We're really going to miss this place. And if you're traveling to Mexico, do yourself a favor and make sure that you come here. to experience our first tropical storm, I think. We've closed all the windows, we were watching the lightning, and we just heard thunder above us, so. We're prepared. Ah! This is Sunday's first tropical storm. We're uh, officially testing our weatherproofing. All right, there's gotta be no holes. We've grown incredibly fond of this waterfall, oasis, playground, dreamscape, and it's making it hard to leave. We've spent time relaxing, enjoying each other's company, getting to know locals, and sort of learning how to backflip off a rope swing. These are the natural crescendos and decrescendos of overland travel. We fall in love with beautiful places, only to say goodbye and leave for the next. Speaking of the next, we have found an off-road route that'll take us through beautiful farm country and lead us to perhaps the biggest and most epic view in all of the Huasteca Potosina region. This great waterfall tour isn't over yet.
The last time either of us had seen any place so lush and green was when we left home on Vancouver Island. The difference is we're getting used to our only company being the local cattle and the stunning array of jungle birds, butterflies, and other unfamiliar wildlife. Hoping to make camp next to this beautiful river. However, that's going to depend on whether the point on our map actually exists. The heartbeat of the jungle never ceases. Silence is a distant memory, and the cathedrals of tropical trees are a haven of wonders. If that's too poetic, it is simply just dazzling here. Never have I ever driven in such a stunning jungle. Just look at that. Oh, there's more butterflies down there, of course. If you fellas ever find a woman, that's like Stacy and is gonna film videos, drive your crazy truck, do a crazy trip with you across the world, open barbed wire gates in the middle of Mexico. It's a laundry list, but find that woman, hold her tight and never let go. One in a million. Sounds like somebody is playing a synthesizer. It is time that we turn this into fresh salsa. Too much garlic, too much lime, is it just right? Too oniony? What's the verdict? I just got, I was pretty happy with the garlic, for sure. Yeah, those were could, two big garlic. Could use a little more lime, and the tomatoes could be sweeter. Okay, so you hate it. No, it's really good, it's really good. <laughs> we're just harsh critics, okay? We're reviewers. Speak for yourself. <laughs> it's really good. We added one more tomato, one more bundle of cilantro, and three fresh basil, basil leaves. And now, now it's perfect. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
Being here, we're realizing how far we've come. Through our crazy test drive to Denver in the middle of winter, facing challenges, overcoming obstacles, and learning how to live in harmony with each other on the road. It's been challenging, but so worth it. We're grateful. We're really grateful to be here. Look at him just licking the track. Yeah, we taste good. This must be a sign of good luck, right? About one kilometer from where we camped last night is the Granddaddy waterfall of the Huasteca Potosina region. <laughs> That is so cool. There's a big blue one. Hi. Oh, bye. This is Tamul, and believe it or not, it's the low season. It cascades 105 meters over the cliff, and in peak rainy season, it spans 300 meters wide. It is the largest waterfall in the Huasteca Potosina region. That may be one of the coolest drone shots I've ever taken. <laughs> Those look a little steep, eh? I don't even know how to tackle this one. I like this this railing. It's it's for little people. Oh, missing a stair. Oops. Mm -hmm. I could tell you this was Canada, Iceland, Mongolia, and you'd probably believe me. We didn't know what to expect when coming to Mexico. I can tell you it surely wasn't this. places that's uh, really hard to leave. Yeah. I just uh, not only do I not want to leave, I want to live here. Just set up a little palapa. Live with the butterflies. And live with the swallows and the butterflies. So what do you guys think? What was your favorite waterfall of the Great Waterfall Tour? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments.
Now we've just got to hike up, whatever, 100 meters. Only up from here. Almost there. The butterfly is still like the Chinook. <laughs> what the heck? Look out on the side. I hope you can see him on the camera. <laughs> it's hilarious. If you get close to them, you can see that they're actually purple. Check out this sweet Nissan tour bus. That thing is a unit. Things that wouldn't be legal in Canada. If you're enjoying this video, please smash that like button and consider subscribing. It's free and it really does help us out. It looked like a kid's dance, like it was all just a bunch of young teens dancing. It's like a, what, a homecoming. Yeah. <laughs> Driving through these quaint, colorful, and lively villages in remote areas of Mexico make us appreciate a simple life, one that's filled with community, great food, and living in a beautiful area, rich in natural abundance. While they may have less, perhaps they have so much more. It's time for us to gain some elevation and head into the mountains. The village's rugged landscape has helped shield it from industrialization. A majority of the residents still speak the indigenous Huastec language, and many live in traditional dwellings. I'm jumping out of another vehicle, babe. Please get that out. That thing is huge. <laughs> Travelers come here to visit La Posas, a garden in the rainforest created by Edward James. Its eccentric castle-like pillars and sculptures surround nearly 80 pools and waterfalls hidden in the jungle. Adorable. Well, there's nobody here, but we're pretty sure we can camp there. We'll find out soon.
treehouse camping. Uh, this is what happens when Matthew can't wait to find the pool or the shower. <laughs> Just in a random river. It's cold though. It's like <laughs> cool mountain water. Your your Canadian is showing. <laughs> <laughs> Hola, señorita. Yo, tú necesito un muchalada? <laughs> you look so foreign. Tú necesito un muchalada? <laughs> sí, sí. Ah, muy bien. Un momento. <laughs> Dos muchalada? <laughs> Dos? Dos. Ah, excelente. Thank you, sir. De nada. Nobody said driving the entire Western Hemisphere would be easy. We got kicked out of our camp spot that we were just at. I think because of Mother's Day? I don't really know. I tried to negotiate and he was like, no serviso. And I'm like, I don't need your service. I just need a <laughs> safe place to park. Dude, I'll hold my pee for 12 hours if I have to. And yeah, he, he wasn't having it. He wasn't rude, but he definitely wanted us to leave. So we left and now we are parked on the side of a random street. So yeah. that's cool. You yeah. know, sometimes that's just, you know, what happens the way when driving over land. Yeah. Not all camping is created equally. <laughs> Uh, also, this 12 volt fan has oh, been this is putting in the hours. Mrs. Frizzle, th this, this, girl, <laughs> this girl doesn't turn off, man. This is, other than Stacy, this is my new best friend. They compete for the top spot. It's true. I'm losing <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I, this is honestly like a freaking lifesaver. This thing, it, it runs all night. Yeah. It, it, it's on all night. Stay tuned for our gear that makes the difference. Give some dude eight pesos so you can get your toilet paper, which is actually just a napkin. And this is the smallest stall I've ever been in, actually. I can barely, I have to like lean way over the toilet just so I can close the door. <laughs> uh, I love Mexico. Leaving Slitla, 
we would gain more elevation as we headed east, deep into the Sierra Gorda mountain range. Our struggles of the day are about to get solved by this gorgeous Mexican pizza. We got Hawaiian and Mexicana. I'm excited for the Hawaiian. I don't know why. It just feels right to be in Hawaiian. They give you ketchup with your Hawaiian pizza, but it's not ketchup, it's ketchup. Ketchup. And we also give you this, which I... That, that was spicy. It was really spicy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I can't. It's a pretty good pizza. Mmm. Sure. Hola, amigo. Hola. Buenos dias. We're up in this area so that we can experience a sunrise at the highest point in the Sierra Gorda mountain range. Hoping for a clear morning. We camped in the tiny village of Cuatro Palos, which directly translates to four sticks, but really means Mountain of the Half Moon. <laughs> Off to go find what Mexico City has to offer for tacos, I'm sure it's very small assortment. We accidentally ordered horchata instead of water, which is a popular rice milk beverage, and it is delicious. These tacos also took the new number one ranking in our travels. Ready to take on Mexico City? Day there, Sunday. See you tonight. First order of business to locate the bus stop. I've never
never been that nauseous in a movie vehicle in my entire life. <laughs> we couldn't even talk to each other. <laughs> I was bumpier than the Chinook down a 4x4 trail. We must have had signs hovering above our head that said, I'm lost, that led this kind stranger to assist us in locating the subway and the correct line to take. Okay. Or so we thought. We appreciate it. Thank you. Line number nine. Okay, got it. That seems easy enough. Stop. We'll find out in a sec here. Now what? Back in the world. La Condesa is a trendy, tree-lined, artsy district in Mexico City, dotted with boutique shops, cafes, and street taquerias. This hub of eclectic eateries and exquisite street art draws us in immediately. Murals, hipsters, historic architecture, and divine smells populate this area. We visit a lot of cathedrals, missions, and churches on our travels. Few have left such a remarkable feeling as this one. It tastes incredible. <laughs> wow. Everywhere you look in this place, everything is happening. Everything you could imagine is for sale, and everyone's got something to do. But no one's in a hurry. With landmarks dating back to the Aztec era, the historical center is the heartbeat of Mexico City. The iconic buildings, street art, and massive population of vendors, restaurants, and pedestrians all somehow exist in harmony. When they say everything happens in Mexico City, they're not lying. Santa's here.
It's chaos, but it's not. It's like organized chaos. It's like there's millions of people, but they're all friendly and nice and walking in the same direction and not yelling at you or bumping into you. They're just like coming up to you and offering you cool things. Never have I ever seen a Coca-Cola bar. Allured by every footstep down interesting new streets, following the locals around almost made us feel like we were a part of something. Trust us when we say you can buy anything in Mexico City. It's hyper stimulating, exquisitely beautiful, and endlessly entertaining. No right up. I'll tell you about the right up. It smells like a nice, clean, crisp IPA. Oh, I miss that. I really miss that. Okay, now that everything is fuzzy, it's time to head back to the Airbnb. That's a lie. We're going to another service. <laughs> Just kidding. We're going to another brewery. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> walking down random roads that look fun. Mexico City at night is lively. PM. Our Uber is on its way. And I'd say we crushed it. We checked off a big list, and I would say for one day we did Mexico City justice. Yeah, me too. My legs are really sore. My legs are so sore. I don't know how many kilometers we walked today, but it's got to be half a marathon. All right, we got a big day tomorrow, so we're going to catch this Uber and go to bed. We'll see you in, well, we'll see you in a few seconds. meter volcano known as El Popo has been spewing toxic smoke, ash, and chunks of incandescent rock continuously. The Popocatapetl volcano in Mexico erupts, threatening 22 million people as it rumbles. Popo has been active since 1994 and is considered one of the most dangerous volcanoes. With the beautiful chaos of Mexico City in a rearview mirror, we are just arriving at the ancient metropolis of Teotihuacan. We're fascinated by these great temples, their murals and paintings, and the significance they must have held and still hold to this day. Perhaps the most interesting for us is that the original builders of these great monuments remain a mystery to this day. I love the detail of the little rocks in between the big rocks. 
It just separates it from anything I've seen before. We visit these places to connect with the past, appreciate human achievements, and experience the aura of ancient civilizations. If that sounds like you as well, you'd enjoy looking deeper into the history and mystery of Teotihuacan. While our thoughts swim in the enigma of pyramids and colossal masterpieces of man, the hands of our adventurous compass spin towards something far more supernatural. Climbing up the dirt roads of a foreign mountainside, we made camp in a farmer's field for the night. Waking up to the sound of horses will always be Stacy's favorite, no matter what country we're in. While we were planning our route across Mexico, I recently learned that Mexico hosts the largest active volcano in North America. Since we were in the area, we thought it might be worth a look. To say we didn't know what to expect would be the biggest understatement of our entire trip. This is our first look at Popocatépetl. Okay, so the visitor center is closed. Okay, but... But you can still drive through. These guys are hauling on their quad. That's the police. There's literally snow building up on our windshield. I thought we left this in Denver. <laughs> you know what? Today it just like... makes me feel like we're at home. <laughs> our 50-ish uh, year old windshield seal seems to have taken its last seal. <laughs> it's showing its age. It's showing its age. Volcano is erupting. When traveling remote villages in Mexico, sometimes you want eggs. 
Well, the eggs come in bags. Wishful thinking. We, I would... <laughs> we thought that we could keep these alive. I would recommend not buying the bagged eggs. No bagged eggs around here, everyone. <laughs> Unless Hard. you're going to hard boil them or eat them all the same day. And, yeah, uh, you know. this happened within like a day. Lesson learned. Yeah. Imagine selling bagged eggs. <laughs> It's weird being this close. I mean, we're probably not that close, but it looks close. It feels close. Guys, pop it off. Choo choo. put an extra blanket on the bed. It's cold. This is the first time I've worn long sleeves in months, which is crazy. I can't believe we can't kind of at the base of a volcano. Yes, indeed we did. However, our adventure with El Popo was far from over at this point. For most travelers, the visitor center is their first and last view of El Popo. For us, we would continue down a remote dirt road in hopes to find a private camp with a different view and a through road to the neighboring city of Puebla. So what on earth are you doing here? And just when you think you're remote, this guy shows up. <laughs> nice thing rallies. What is the difference between red cola and Coca-Cola? I'm not sure. Caught between fear and wonder, 
were humbled and mesmerized by the creation and destruction of Earth's mighty spectacle. Coffee, the perfect way to start a day of supernatural activity. We can still hear it though. It just yeah. sounded like rumbling thunder and earthquakes. Is this gonna be like Pompeii? Like, <laughs> do we have to run? Exactly. It's like, what is running? Like, do we, we just pack everything up as fast as you can and drive away? Yeah. They did uh, shut down the airport and they've closed schools. He's just chooching away right now. At this point, we're packing up everything so we're ready to leave in case this turns into Pompeii and there's ballistic material flying into the air. This are just escalating a lot quicker. This wasn't in the Overlander's handbook. What to do during a volcano eruption? We'll add that to the next rendition. All part of our story. Oh, it appears to have rained. Mud. <laughs> All over the truck. That's nice. Look at the bumper. Oh my god. The bumper is just gray. The volcano has just been going off much all night but it's kind of weird we're like in this little bubble where the smoke hasn't really landed that much over there it doesn't look so nice it's crazy we just went through a uh, roadblock where they're they're blocking everyone from going up to the volcano where we just came from <laughs> oh man and we just roll through covered in soot <laughs> yeah once in the towns we quickly realized the impact the volcano was having on the communities the air quality here is bad much worse than it was up at the volcano We came here in hopes to find a shop to get some work done on our truck, but now that's gonna have to wait until a place where it's safe to be outside. Okay, so we are heading down the streets of uh, Tehuacan. Just got an epic car wash and now we're following a guy to taste his mezcal, because that's just what you do in Mexico. <laughs> there he goes. We are way too shiny to be rolling around these streets right now. <laughs> Just, <laughs> that's crazy. Like we got tire shine, the rock sliders are all shiny. They got like boiled. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're waiting outside this uh, awesomely colored garage to get some mezcal. It's in like this 40 liter jerry can and he's just gonna get me a little taster. <laughs> Our lives just get more and more interesting by the day. The one, okay. I'll take the small one. <laughs> I don't think that was the small one, but just just smell it. It smells incredible. <laughs> well, that's got a, that's got a flavor. <laughs> we'll take the lot. <laughs> Except we're gonna die. It's forte. Oh, what? Yeah, that's We had a few hour drive from just outside of Tehuacan to the beautiful city of Oaxaca. We were greeted yet again by something brand new for us to experience on this trip. A sunny good morning. We are in Oaxaca City, outskirts, near a little town called Tule, staying at the nicest campsite I think we've ever stayed we're sta at. We're staying at an RV park that makes you never want a wild camp again. <laughs> Let's go. 
They cut mangoes better than me. It didn't take long for us to recognize this as the most unique and interesting market that we had ever been to. With artisans of every kind and food for every palate, this is the type of experience we treasure. Dang, it's really good. Another hailstorm for the books. And would you look at all the goodies we got from the market. A new beach blanket and some fun vessels for our mezcal that is hopefully less diesel and rocket fuel and more agave than the last one. Oh, this is me. Okay, I guess Rob goes first. <laughs> uh, this one looks nice. Oh, you would choose that. Great. of these fruits look familiar. Potato or not, it's going in a smoothie. Apparently this is how you know it's ripe. I, I, don't, I don't really know what, what we're about to find. Okay. That's interesting. It's not what I was expecting. It doesn't really smell like much. It looks super weird. Is it supposed to be this color? I, I don't know. So. Yeah, I think so. Wow, that's a... And it's got a really cool pit. Kind of looks like meat. <laughs> looks like pulled pork. <laughs> All right, it's going in. Hope we don't die. A little bit of citrus and guava, I think, will be a nice touch. It's like freaking cake. It actually tastes like this should be a cake. Like, oh my gosh. It's like pudding. It is like pudding. It's like mousse. Yeah. Time and again, we're reminded that the human experience thrives on human connection. Fueled with the inspiring stories from other travelers, our journey continues. down there in a while. But I think it'll lead to an awesome view, so.
30 or so kilometers mm -hmm. off-road through some remote villages around San Juan del Pacifico. San Jose del Pacifico. That one. Then in the pines, which means it's cooler. And we are taking about four days to do <laughs> what could be... I mean, you could drive to the coast in a day from Oaxaca easily. Um, most, most people, people do. Take, <laughs> most people take that or two, or two days. We are uh, taking our sweet time because we heard it's really humid there. Yeah, we're not quite prepared for the onslaught of heat that may be in our future. Waiting for us. Yeah, so we're going to enjoy this off-road route. We're going to enjoy the mountains. I mean, we're in this, this camp is beautiful. You saw the drone shots this morning. We could stay here for 10 days. Yeah. But we're not going to. No. <laughs> we are going to go find a river. Yes. Maybe we can swim in it. Okay, let's make some miles. Oh my god. Just when we think we're in the middle of nowhere on an off-road route, there appears a beautiful Mexican village. Have I ever seen a bright pink church <laughs> in the middle of a jungle? What? Coconuts everywhere. Awesome. So we stopped for lunch, but um, ended up with nieves and instead because that's a meal. One is banana, and it has literal chunks of like ginormous banana. And one is coconut and it has chunks of coconut in it and the humidity 
is making sure that these are keeping us cool. <laughs> heard thumping in the jungle? I'll give you one guess what kind of tree this is. A freaking mango tree. God is real and he likes mangoes. What the heck? Ah. Heaven, you just fell from the sky. Our Canadian is showing once again. Tell me it's really hot without telling me it's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's right there. Water. We have found it. We found it. It's here. It's been here all along. The Pacific is still, still there. Great Pacific Coast. This is thrilling. It's like a new frontier. It smells like it too. Oh. Matthew found a coconut. We need the second tool. Wow. Even when it's been in the sun for too long, it still tastes delicious. Mm. It's like the nectar of the gods. Provisions. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I come back and Matthew's just like adopted birds. I told him puppies, not birds. <laughs> wow, hello. So we have discovered that this tree that we are camped next to is a uh, saputilla or saputilla. Your gringo, and it's of the same family of the mammy sapote. It's often called oh, it's often called little sapote, and it's got these little brown fruits. And you saw the mammy earlier, the mammy sapote. This is a sapotilla, and we're gonna try it. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Oh my gosh, it tastes like brown sugar. What? Oh my gosh, it tastes like brown sugar. What? Brown sugar. It's like a sugar plum. <laughs> that is crazy. It's like dessert, it's like pudding. Wow. It's hardly even a fruit at this point. It's so cool tasting a new fruit.
Despite the nearly unbearable heat and humidity, all the beaches had people on them. And while yes, we love meeting people, we love balancing it with solitude. We were really going to have to get out of our way and off the beaten path if we were going to find what we were looking for. Wouldn't be Mexico without puppies at our camp. <laughs> These ones are especially cute. I think we found it. Paradise Sweaty Beach. To find another Paradise Sweaty Beach? Paradise Sweaty Beach. <laughs> the rain is so welcomed. It's nice and cool on my arm. Driving in the rain with our windows down because it's so nice. <laughs> oh yeah, that's glorious. Wow. <laughs> Matthew is in the well-deserved shower after our bug attack from the beach that you just saw. But now we're at a surf camp and it's beautiful and the Chinook is parked under a tree which means shade so we're gonna get cleaned up and enjoy this spot. <laughs> Traveling overland across Mexico has already proven to be incredibly rewarding. Embracing the unknown and overcoming its challenges has expanded our perspective on life outside our home. We've been working really hard every week to bring you the best content and to grow this channel. 
if you've made it this far in the video, I hope that we've earned your subscription. Zooming out on our map around our current location reveals a line we haven't seen in a while, a border. Guatemala awaits our arrival, but Mexico still has its strong hold on us. Chiapas could potentially be our last state in Mexico if we choose to skip the eastern section. It feels like Mexico has warmed up to us just as much as we have to it. Our first few kilometers into Chiapas remind us of San Luis Potosi. Each state seems to have its own particular flavors, colors, and energy. Some thrive on the chaos, and others the slower alternative. The offensive heat of the Oaxacan coastline has driven us into the mountains in search of cooler weather. After diligently scrolling our maps, it seems we might have found the place. We made it to Chiapas, and we're at an epic waterfall that we can't remember the name of. Yeah, it's more of a canyon, it's not really... I don't know, there's caves. <laughs> uh, right now we have to walk down eight to nine hundred stairs. In the heat. <laughs> it's not quite as hot as the coast. We waited till late in the day, it's like five o'clock. Yeah, still warm though. Just kidding, we actually waited until the next morning. <laughs> yeah, because that's a lot of stairs to do at that time of night. This is going to be a lot better. Check out these caves. Okay, down we go. 800 stairs left. All the stairs are a little bit different size and they're slightly sloped down. It's just like a guessing game with your feet. This is Cascada El Aguacero. This beautiful treasure at the bottom of the canyon reminds me of a Zen garden, perfectly manicured, and it took us completely by surprise. No, this iguana is not dead, and he's also not drowning. He, like us, is trying to beat the heat. Well, this is certainly another hard one to leave. Mm -hmm. We just never bring enough snacks. <laughs> That's the problem, yeah. The only reason to leave is because we're hungry. Damn, what an incredible place though. First few days in Chiapas. Loving it. Loving it. Ugh. Wow. 
Why is Nieves better than ice cream? Nieves is better than ice cream. I'm not sure why. So how does that waterfall rank on our uh, our expanding list? Yeah. They just kind of keep surprising us in different ways. Yeah. Back in the Chinook, we're excited to be heading higher into the mountains. Our destination today is San Cristobal, an elevation of around 2,300 meters. Just the thought of being at that altitude forces my foot a little harder on the gas pedal. After a grueling climb accompanied by some ear popping, we stick our hands out the window and grab the cold air. The landscape starts with dark hues of pine trees and fans out to white tiny squares of rooftops speckled with colorful windows and planted flowers. It already feels like we don't ever want to leave this place. The town greets us with narrow streets, surprise one-ways, and colorful paint choices atop cobblestone layers. Our first glimpse as we make our way to camp leaves a delicious taste in our mouths and we can't wait for more. tonight is nestled in an adventure park and the spot we are hoping for lays next to a river. The surprises this place holds are still unbeknownst to us. Perfecto. See? Gracias. As with the theme on most of our trip, we are the only ones here, and it looks like we're going to have this river spot all to ourselves. It's time to enjoy some solitude, put on warmer clothes, and let our heels dig into the earth. We picked a good spot. Are you planking? This is the first time I've slept through the night in quite a few weeks. No stray dogs, no midnight mariachi music, just peaceful songbirds and the quiet sounds of the river. Perfect.
Well, solitude can't last forever. And it was time for us to sink our teeth into what this unique town has to offer. What did you buy? A nacho? Oh, it's good. It's good? Mm. I'm not entirely sure where it is. Yeah, I call it two fravita. De fresa. De fresa? Sí. Yeah. Gracias. Yeah. This liqueur, Posh, is native to the San Cristobal region. So it's only right that we try as many flavors as we can. Out of respect. Waking up after a monumental tropical rain not only brought a sense of coolness to the air, but for us, a sense of adventure. It seemed it was time to explore what was beyond our camp in this adventure park.
When we entered the park, we noticed tiny, decrepit wooden signs that said Grutas. This was not what we expected. The beautiful limestone archway over the freshwater river leads to over 400 meters of caves, rooms, and balconies. It really does feel like another world. What's up, gang? <laughs> They're really cute. It's hilarious. There's like one goat. <laughs> That's funny. You sounded like one there. <laughs> blah, blah, The incredible contrast between temperatures, flora, and fauna that Mexico's elevation reveals will make you never feel prepared. Whether you're coming down a mountain into the Hulk Green sauna, playing hide and seek with perfect surf breaks, or slowly rolling the windows back up when you see a pine tree, Mexico touches your skin with different hands around every exaggerated bend. Leaving the cool side of the pillow we found in San Cristobal is daunting. We're not sure we're ready for clothes to stick to our bodies again, or the transfer of cold water bottles into the fridge game. We like cooking inside without repercussions, and we're sure loving sleeping beside each other underneath the duvet. However, what the heat offers with its beauty, we simply cannot seem to stay away from. Today we are on the hunt for another incredible gift of nature, El Chiflon, because truly the only way to survive temperatures and humidity like this is to reside by a water source. It's hot! That's just from my seatbelt. The Chinook gets to take a breath after a windy and hot few hours of driving, and we are greeted with cold water. That is refreshing, because the air sure isn't. Cheers to you guys. Tomorrow we get to see, I don't know, the, the greatest waterfall in all of Mexico. It's a great, it's a, I can't remember if it's the biggest or the greatest, but... It's pretty epic. Just you wait. If you thought the ones from the Huasteca were epic, mm -hmm. we're all in for a treat. The, water tour, the waterfall tour continues. It's never ending, actually. After our ceremonious cerveza in our private river, we fall asleep to its perfect white noise. El Chiflon is only a few kilometers upstream, and we can feel its call by morning.
As the tree canopy closes in, we're quickly surrounded by animated styles of leaves and flowers that belong on a Hawaiian shirt. We follow the river on our left and can't stop talking about its color. It's early in the morning, so the songbirds are still at their chorus. our jungle tour, the waterfalls become more powerful. El Chiflon is a series of five waterfalls, with the pinnacle being what translates to Bridal Veil Falls. spectacular veil of water crashes into a perfect turquoise bath that continues to the other falls that we just witnessed. A ladder and platform allows you to get close enough to shower in the mist and once again nature has created perfection. We smile and look at each other with agreement. Mexico has done it again. It's like these are the most stunning waterfalls I've ever seen. Yeah. And we're almost numb to it. Yeah, that's what we were saying. It's like it's like hard to be surprised. Like, oh look, another stunning waterfall Whoa. in Mexico. <laughs> Mexico does it once again. After bathing in the Gatorade tub, and when the tourists start arriving, our shoes are on and we're on the road to the next watering hole. Literally. Just like doing laps. You guys are probably wondering how we know when it's going to be a good day. The answer is right here. Right here in this little ball of magic. I don't know if I can do this without a hammer, but. Hand is hammer. There we go. 
and this is this is how you have a good day. This lake, or mature cenote, is a mesmerizing natural sinkhole formed by the collapse of limestone bedrock. It reveals a crystal clear pool of turquoise water. Cenotes were important for Mayan culture, and that's also where their name comes from. They were used as a main water source for most Mayan civilizations, and also considered the gateway to the underworld. Cheers from you need a jab. You need a you need a jab. <laughs> you need a jab. <laughs> That's honestly what it sounds like. Good good work. This is the funniest little town. We're gonna show you tomorrow morning. It's got uniqueness in a very unfamiliar way. Very much so. But and it's really cool. Yeah, our curiosity has been just flowing the whole time, but there's no one here. So you can't even like get a vibe check. There's... The, I'll give you one word for the vibe check. Liquid. I was going to say pools. Yeah, pools. Alright. Cheers. Oh, that was so odd. You don't need to tune into the Weather Channel to get the report around here. But the wind's going that way. Yeah, I don't know what's in store for us with that guy. By simply looking at the sky, we could tell that we were in for some entertainment Thankfully, or something really scary. Yeah, we might just get a really good show. Chasing storms, you got stuff all over your lens, bro. The wind in your face. <gasps> Do you see that? There's a fire. That just hit it. That literally just started. I'm, you see that, right? I see that, babe. That's exactly where that just hit. Yeah. Oh, you can't see it on the lens. Oh my gosh. That fire's bright. Thankfully, with most tropical storms, comes a monsoon level of rain. Now knowing we wouldn't be chased by a rogue bushfire, we could plan an off-road route. So we're calling tonight's cloud formation the three humps. I wonder what they'll bring. The river that runs through the town gets directed into these beautiful pools that are 
public from what it seems because there is nobody here. This was an awesome place to settle for a couple days, beat the heat, and catch up on some work. It's time for a game of count how many pools there are in Unina Jab. We lost count somewhere after 30. place must get busy at some time of the year, but we're not sure when that is. It's certainly an awesome place to visit. This may or may not be a shortcut, but we are taking a off-road route that's gonna do some steep switchbacks to get us over those mountains and back onto the carretera, the highway. If you're wondering I'm not wearing a shirt, it's hot. Don't worry, it's only 7.30 a.m. on the map a series of switchbacks and I can tell Matthew is giddy to be off the tope roads. I am in charge of flying the drone and honestly can't believe what I am seeing. A road may seem windy when you're in the vehicle, but from above, it's a whole nother perspective. I can see the perfect hairpin corners that follow the cliffside and the snake that has been carved into the earth. Simply a road that shouldn't be there, but it is. Matthew and the Chinook work together in the ballet of an off-road route in Mexico, and I'm happy to have front road tickets to the show. past a sign hidden by moss and trees in the bushes, I decide that my intuition is strong enough that we need to turn around and check it out. We found a parking lot and purchased tickets to what we were not sure of. We discovered that the Tenem Puente Mayan ruins are truly worth better signage. This is not a wall. These are stairs. We let ourselves into this entirely foreign world in an attempt to understand. Well, this is a very rare sight. We 
can't help but feel so far removed with our phones jumping out of our pockets and the Chinook waiting for us in the parking lot. Maintaining presence, we walk where soldiers walked, touch the land that has provided for so long and appreciate this treasure left for us to learn about. A little steep. The ruins here spread over nearly 10 acres, and it was a major trade hub up until 1200 AD. It has three ball courts and three distinct plazas spread out over many different levels. the door opens back up to our current era and reality, we're one with the heat again. That's got the stuff. Thankfully, our elevation is gaining, and with our noses pointed towards watering holes, we're feeling good about checking out Lagunas de Montebello. doused in food coloring, the houses wrapped in rainbows, and the flowers of brilliant colors, Mexico sure knows how to add an extra layer of saturation to every color scheme. Yeah. The pine trees that line the road symbolize our elevation has gained, and this will be a comfortable place to lay our heads tonight. Mexico's deeply rich cultural history, stunning beauty, and wonderful people never cease to amaze us. Almost everywhere we've been, smiles strike our faces and gratitude fills our hearts. I don't mean to sound too poetic, this place is just incredible. Two things to do on our list today. One is check out more of the amazing lakes. Two, 
is go back 30 kilometers to the nearest town because these little villages have next to nothing for fresh food, which is A, kind of sad, and B, no, it's just kind of sad because it sucks for them and it sucks for us. So we got to go back to town, but it's okay because the landscape is stunning. An elephant that lingers in our tiny home is that our steering fix from way back on the road to Denver has finally called it quits. If you've been with us since Arizona, this may be deja vu. We noticed a small mechanic shop not far from the lakes with two Toyotas parked out front, and we decide to head there. We roll up, and within minutes, the steering wheel is out, and Matthew and the mechanic are deliberating. It's decided that we need a new steering bearing. About 20 kilometers away, there's a shop that can get this done. But Matthew had to get there first. Oh, <laughs> Be safe. <laughs> guys at El Torno fabricated with a lathe a new plastic bearing for the end of the steering column and it was great it only cost 40 bucks and it was done right and now our steering will be legit which will be in <laughs> adios What we experience in the days to come seems beyond verbal description. Life on the road here isn't easy, but damn, if you're chasing adventure, then this is it. Weaving through remote villages and steep cobblestone driveways, we keep catching glimpses of the turquoise bathtub stretching through the valley. We're sending hopeful prayers that we can camp next to it for the night. After getting lost in a tiny village where horses are crossing guards and chickens double the human population, we get directions from a young boy. Finally, we turn the last corner and our oasis greets us. Traveling in the off season has once again proved fruitful. That was grueling. We were, ended up being on the wrong side of the river where all the wild camping was. These roads are bad and steep and I feel so good being here right now. It's stunning. Yeah, I'm gonna go jump in that. We're camped at Las Brisas and truly can't figure out how we found this place by accident and have never heard of it. One of the most cleansing realities of this trip is being gifted the intentional time in nature. Our mornings are spent listening to the stories of birds and different worlds waking from their slumber. Coffee with a view is something we'll be chasing for the rest of our lives. Once the bean water has tapped into each vein, it's time to explore this jungle paradise. If you somehow thought we could get sick of turquoise blue rivers and waterfalls, 
you would be mistaken. We swim and walk barefoot through the foreign flora. The fallen leaves make for a comfy base for our foot pads. But don't stand still for more than a minute because the ants that live below you will make sure you suffer for ruining their path. following the southern regions of the Chiapas jungle. We discuss the ideas of removing our doors right off the Chinook, as the heat frequently takes over us. Man, you know it's steep when you almost stall out. <laughs> Just across from our beautiful river camp is Las Nubes, which is what we were actually looking for yesterday. Not necessarily known for its heights or series of cascades, but more for its chosen path. We walk out on some rocks in search of falling water and realize the show is happening underneath us. In some spots you can see the water racing between the earth and then disappearing again. Once we feel like our five dollars has been well spent, it's time to hit the highway again. That was epic. Not what we expected. That's pretty cool. I'm impressed. And we're gonna have to write a blog post of the best waterfalls in Mexico, because I think we've got the best list. But I could be biased. <laughs> the sun is almost set, and it's still incredibly hot and humid. At this point, we are questioning our decision about coming here. Guatemala. <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> Luckily for us, in true Mexican fashion, there's always something special at the end of a long, bumpy dirt road. The Jungle Book, the movie King Kong, a zoo brochure, a flower-filled greenhouse, or a perfectly painted image of what it means when you hear tropical jungle vibes. This scenery will make you forget about the heat 
and allow you to appreciate the world inside the sauna. We enter through a small village that leads us right to a river where our camp awaits. A flat spot shaded by tropical trees has our name written all over it. The top goes up and the windows are open while we go for an evening stroll. And it's a good thing we decided to walk around at dusk indeed. In the first hundred meters, we identify fruit trees such as mangoes, bananas, lime, coconut palms, and the faint rustle alerts our ears and we notice a family of howler monkeys making their evening rounds. And we are stoked. It is so jungly, you can probably hear the monkeys in the background. Uh. Perfect. It's like a garnish. Yeah. Nice. Happy jungle. I've never seen wild monkeys before. That's pretty cool. But, you know, whatever gunk dropped on me, whatever, like that. Stacy got, got pooped on. I got it, but like it, it was like clear and goopy, and now my toe is stingy. It might have been from a plant or a fruit, like some kind of sap. A fruit just attacked me, everyone. And the jungle was relentless. There is vibrant life everywhere you look here. And I'm just waiting for a jaguar to come out from across the river. You could have told me that this was the Amazon rainforest and I likely would have believed you. The biological and geographical diversity in this country is astounding. It is incredible to witness something so beyond what you thought it was. That's a monkey. <laughs> you guys ever seen? An avocado tree? Oh, here you go. There's an avocado tree. I never get out of the water, I swear. These beautiful scarlet macaws are highly endangered, and some experts estimate that there are only 400 or less left in the wild in the Maya biosphere region. We're blessed to be able to see them in their natural habitat. After sweating off any fat that was left on our bodies and one more trip to the river, 
Our home becomes our transportation, and we're on the move. What is your idea or perception of familiar? What does the comfort of your own home look like to you? I know for us, familiar looked a lot different seven months ago. Familiar used to be coming through the same door, sleeping in the same spot, buying the same groceries, and hugging the same people. Mexico gave us a new sense of familiar that we weren't expecting. Familiar in the smiles and greetings from strangers. Familiarity and patience as we learn a new language. And familiar is the phone in our palm for Google Translate. Familiar is open to laying our heads anywhere. And familiar is feeling safe. Familiar is not knowing the food you're purchasing and letting your taste buds be the judge. Familiar is being so excited about the unfamiliar that you'll never know familiar again. Let's just say the comfort of our home has transitioned from four walls to a million new, way more colorful walls. We love it here, and we know this will be a very hard goodbye. Although the Guatemala border is yet a stone throw away, we weren't quite ready to hop over yet. And as the sun sets, we found a place to spend our last two nights in Mexico. Stacy, the navigator, found us a cute little campground for our last couple nights in Mexico. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> But exciting. Sad and exciting.